All right, so in this video, we're just gonna learn how to make these curves in Blender, just a few tips and tricks, and yeah, that's about it. So let's get started. All right, so here we are in Blender, and again, I just have these scales, and it could be anything really. The point is just to kind of show you how to actually use it. And what we're gonna do is just select this. I'm gonna make sure to press Control A, and we can just click on all transforms just so it's kind of in the same direction. And I kind of want it to go on the Y axis, which is the screen one. And yeah, so that's good enough. What I want to do next is select it and we want to go to modifiers, go to add modifiers, and then we can go to array. And right now it's on X. So basically it's going to add on the X axis, which is what we don't want. We want one on the Y and zero on the X and zero on the Z. But also I do want these to actually intersect. So right now it's not intersecting. So I just want to do this and you can hold down shift to give you like smooth increments. So bringing that to about there, maybe you can always adjust this. It's not final, by the way. So we can then go to 10, for example, for that count. And I think that's good enough for that. And next, what I'm going to do is actually just hide this really quickly. I'm going to press shift A and we're going to add a curve and we can go to Bezier and you can add a bunch of other curves, but I think Bezier is pretty good. So we can click on Bezier and then I will rotate this. Okay, around about there. And let's say, yeah, 90, that's fine. I'll scale this up with S and that should be good enough. And let me bring back our scales here so I can see where that is. And I'll click on this and then G, Y just to bring that back here. Yeah, that should be good enough. And next, what I will do is on the actual scales, right? I wanna add another modifier and that will be the curve modifier. So basically we're saying follow a curve. So I'll click on the eyedropper and then click on that. And there you go. Now, by the way, we're saying deform X axis, but if you say Z or something along those lines, um, that could be wrong. So just kind of play around with these and see which one works. In my case, it is the X axis. And another thing you can do is just G and then Y, just so it slides on there. So I'll move it roughly to the middle and there you go. So that is pretty good. And next I wanna go onto the curve here. And what I can do is press tab and you'll now notice that we have a bunch of control points here. So I'll press A, just select everything, right? Just like that. Then I'll right click and say subdivide just so we have one in the middle, just to make it a little bit easier to move around. And now we can actually click on these points and press G to move it around. And now, as you can see, we have a total control over this, right? So G to move that. What you can do is also move these points individually here just to kind of rotate that and give it a little bit more uh, functionality there or movement and you can also click on these and scale it and in this case the scale doesn't really help us uh what what i do want to do is press alt s that will actually scale the the kind of edges right so if i right click and you'll notice here we've got alt s for radius okay so that's what it's doing right that's actually very useful another one is tilt which i think is Control t there you go right, again if i right click it says tilt so Control t and i can just tilt this Right, so that's looking pretty good. And again, what we can do is we can actually move these, right? So maybe there, we can move that to there. And of course we're in 3D, so we can move this. All right, so something along those lines. Anyway, you get the point, right? There's a lot of freedom here. And just one thing I do wanna note is that obviously here, not a lot of subdivisions. So what I usually do is I work with lower subdivisions because if you have a million polygons or vertices even just for one piece, every piece here, right, this is gonna be 10 pieces. That's, that's 10 million already. That's way too much to work with. So I keep it pretty low and then we can go to modifiers again, go to subdivision surface and that will add that there. And that's a bit um, squishy. So what you can do is go again to add modifier and we can go to edge split, for example. And it doesn't work because it's at the bottom so we want the edge split to happen first, right? And there you go. And then we want it to be subdivided. So basically this is stacking on top of one another. So first we have an array, then the array follows the curve. Then the curve is, um, or basically after that we have an edge split. And then after that we're subdividing everything, which is, uh, you know, the way we want it. So that is great. And yeah, that is basically it. So again, we can go to this curve itself, right? And edit it and kind of do whatever we want. And after we're kind of satisfied, what we can do is get out of edit mode with tab. All right, and once I'm actually happy, what I can do is click on this, the actual scales, not the curve, right? And then shift D to duplicate that. I'm just gonna right click so it snaps back into position. And I'll just hide everything because I don't need all of that. So this scales, I'll just say apply all, okay? That will apply all the modifiers and I don't actually want the, I'm gonna undo that. I don't want the subdivision because that's a bit much. And I guess the edge split since we don't actually need that. And then we can go to apply all and here we go. So this is now its own thing. It won't move according to. So if I bring out the curve again, 
and I edit the curve, right? So I move it, it won't move with that piece because it's now its own piece, right? So if I move this, it's not gonna do anything, um, right? Because this is its own piece. All the modifiers have been applied and now you can work with this however you want. Uh, just a few things really quickly. So I'm gonna undo that really quickly. All right, so we're back to scales. Uh, we're back to this piece here. If I go to the curve itself, right? And then go to curve properties or data, right? Uh, I come all the way here to resolution preview. So right now it's on 12 and it seems fine. But if I go to something like three, you can see how jagged it is. And the actual line itself is very jagged. So if I hide the scales, right? The line itself is very jagged. This might not seem very visible on 12, right? But when you start to zoom in, you go, oh yeah, it is pretty jagged. And depending on the model, and this model isn't too crazy. So let me just quickly go to the modifiers. I'm gonna quickly apply the subdivision. So just the subdivision, right? I'm gonna apply that. And you'll notice here, you can actually see the splits happening on the model itself, right? So if, again, if I go to like eight, right now you can really see it, right? It's kind of jagged in some areas. So if you change this to like 150, for example, right now you don't see that. So that there is also very important. So again, on the curve itself, so you don't have to change this now, but for the finals, what you want to do is bump this up to like 150, 200, depending on what you, what you can see. So when you go to your render, just have a look at if you can actually see those splits and then come down to data and make sure that this is instead of 12, right? Make sure, make sure it's something high, like 150, 500 even, maybe not 500, 500 might be a bit much, but yeah, that should be good enough. All right, and just another quick tip here. If you want to maybe use another set of scales, I'm just going to use the cylinder, for example, but let's say that you have another set of scales and you know you don't want to do all of this again because that's a bit much because you set everything up just right. And now you're going to have to kind of do it again by adding all the modifiers and whatever. That, that's a bit much. So what you could do is click on the cylinder, right? The one you want to uh, copy all the modifiers to and then shift click on the main piece. So basically you're saying the yellow is the main piece and the orange, right? The orange is the secondary piece. So we're saying copy all of these uh, modifiers over to the cylinder, right? And in order to do that, you press control L. And in this case, I want to copy the modifiers. So you can do a bunch of things, materials, animation, all that stuff, right? All right, and before we actually do that, what I want to do is rotate this. So rotate because that's what the other one was at, right? So if I do this and just press tab, you see it's on that rotation, so that's fine. So we can click on this, shift click, and then press control L. And I want to copy the modifiers. And immediately, right, it's kind of wrong. So you want to click on that, press Control A, and then press All Transforms. So now there we go. And it's still wrong because remember we had to move it. So click on this, press G, press Y, and then we can just slide this along there. Right there you go. So now we can slide that and say, yeah, it's about there, around about. Right. So now it has all the modifiers, everything, and if we want to, we could just right select all of this here and scale it down if we needed to. Right. Go back there, and there you go. Uh, I guess we could scale it here, but that might not be a good idea. So I would scale it on the actual piece, right? Like that, scale it and then tab out. Okay. So I think, yeah, that's a pretty good way of doing that. Um, there's obviously other ways to do this, but yeah, I think that's a worthwhile way of doing that. So yeah, again, if you have another piece, you can just copy the modifiers. Okay, I'm going to undo that really quickly. All right. So click on this shift, click on that and make sure you press control A to reset all the transforms and right shift click and then control L copy the modifiers and then we can just press click on that G Y and then move it back into place and there you go so that is pretty convenient yeah so there it is once again we're using this curve to basically modify what the piece looks like over here and this if you just press tab it's just that one piece over here that we're using and then we're using an array to build it up and then we're using the curve just to say, you know, follow this curve and kind of do what this curve is doing just to just so we can kind of modify things. And again, we can go back here. We can change the count. We can add more. We can bring it down. We can go to the factor, right? We can bring this down, right? To make it less or squish it down a little bit more. Or we can spread it out, right? We can do something like that. So maybe we're doing like sort of x-ray or, or not an x-ray, but a split diagram or something. We could do that as well. That also works. So this is really, really convenient um, compared to the ZBrush video that I gave you, right? It's not very uh, modular right here. You've got an array, you can you can move it up and down. You, you've got a curve, you can move the curve as much as you want. You can even replace pieces on here, right? So I go to this piece and I click on these two, for example, and I just press E to extrude, right? It'll do that and it'll go along with that. So there we have it. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. So like it if you liked it, dislike it. If you didn't, let me know what you guys thought in the comment section and I will see you in the next one.